I know what you're thinking. This song is only two and a half minutes long. How on earth have they made a 14 minute video about it? And to that I say... Over the past decade I've had a lot of thoughts on Bearer Pop Opera, and those have generally been outlined in Tumblr posts and tweets, in Discord messages, and even in some cases in recordings and conversations on Smooths. But lately I've been particularly interested in one song, Portrait of a Girl. This is a song that I've always liked. It's got a nice satisfying structure that doesn't overstay its welcome. It has pleasant harmonisation and counterpoint. Both the Matt and Ivy lines are within my vocal range, so it's a great song to open for duets on Smool. And yet it's a song that I never really analysed much. This is certainly a bias of mine, it just never particularly struck me as important to Peter and Jason's story, so I kind of glossed over it. And to my memory it doesn't contain any of the major musical themes and motifs that underpin the main driving songs in the musical. For instance, the flute motif at the start of Epiphany, or the Hear My Voice chorus. But the truth is, this song is possibly one of the most complex in the entire show. It's not difficult to sing or play from a technical standpoint, and it's not an emotional or narrative high of the show, but instead it brings together and contrasts the two characters who are possibly most central to Peter and Jason's story, outside of Peter and Jason themselves. So if you'll indulge me for a few minutes, I'd like to discuss not just what the pop opera version of this song does right in constructing these characters, but also why I think this song has the most telling changes in the musical adaptation. I promise this isn't going to be, Bear the Musical is bad and Bear a pop opera is the only good version. There's enough of that out there if you really want to hear someone say that. I just think this song does a particularly good job of highlighting the differences between the two and why I prefer the pop opera version. This entire video was spurred by musical enthusiast video essay analysing Matt Lloyd as a character, and I will just say up front that I broadly agree with everything they said in that, so go watch it if you haven't already. That essay looks at Matt from a more in-universe perspective though, and I think how Matt's characterisation is constructed by the writing and staging is an interesting facet that shouldn't be overlooked. There is one thing that musical enthusiast mentioned that I'd only thought about in passing before, but that is central to my analysis of Matt. In the entire show, he only gets one true solo section. Well, he gets two, but it's the same solo twice, in Epiphany and in No Voice. All of his other major character songs are duets. In Are You There and Confession, he plays foil to Peter. In Auditions and Reputation Stained, he is engaged in battle with Jason, a verbal battle at first, but later a more physical one. In one, he plays against Nadia and then against Ivy and Jason. In Promise, Wonderland, Birthday Bitch and in the rest of one, he's just a fixture of the group. He plays a somewhat central role in all of these, but he's still not the focus of the song. Hell, even in his true solo in Epiphany and No Voice, Matt isn't truly alone. His solo takes place both times on the backdrop of either Jason's funeral or his valedictorian speech, depending on the particular staging. I will almost certainly go further in depth on all of these in a future essay, but it's important to get out of the way because it is the crux of Portrait of a Girl where he is directly contrasted against Ivy. Obviously every character in the show is tragic and complex, that's literally the entire point of the show. But I particularly like how the show constructs and deconstructs Ivy's character. It's very common for the golden girl, the it girl, to have her pedestal broken over the course of a teen drama. That is absolutely nothing groundbreaking at this point. But usually that it girl character isn't the central focus of the show. And even on the occasions where that character is a central character, an example that comes to mind is Lauren Cooper in Faking It. There's usually little time given to that character's self-awareness of their role. That might develop over the course of a season or an entire series run, again as in the case of Lauren from Faking It, but it's never really something that they're aware of at the beginning. And that's what I find interesting about Ivy. Not only is she the it girl, and not only does she have her life shattered to pieces dramatically, but she is self-aware about her position and her construction of her personality, both after the fall in Promise and No Voice, and before here in Portrait of a Girl. From Ivy's perspective, Portrait of a Girl is a soliloquy. To put it plainly, this is her role of a lifetime moment. She's monologuing to the audience about the facade she puts up to maintain her status, and how because she is seen as the crown jewel of the social hierarchy, no one takes the time to get to know her and to see her for who she is. Of the five central characters, I'd argue she's possibly one of the least understood by her peers. Yes, Peter and Jason have their secrets, 
Yes, Nadia feels somewhat of an outcast. Yes, Matt is always playing second fiddle. But they also all to some extent wear those facets of themselves on their sleeves. Matt's crush is no secret. Jason and Peter are mostly happy with their social status. Their relationship is sort of a separate issue from that. But Portrait of a Girl reveals Ivy's inner psyche. She not only feels her status is the only thing people care about, but she is also basically begging someone to take the time to get to know her. But above all of that, she is directly acknowledging that she's playing her part in constructing this facade, standing on her stage and presenting her practiced beauty to the world. The central metaphor of the song, which is incredibly hard to miss, is that Ivy is both the artist and the canvas. She is simultaneously being painted in by society, while herself filling in the gaps society hasn't yet. She brushes away what's stray to present the perfect picture. She is imploring someone to come and lay her soul bare, and hoping that whoever comes along to do that would still like her for who she is. She leaves a hint of but laments that the facade may be too good, that the re-enter Matthew Lloyd. Matt really thinks he can be the person to see Ivy for who she is. He really thinks that he does see Ivy beneath all the layers, and that Ivy is wrong to not see him in return. Matt wants Ivy to just understand that he's taken in, but he isn't really seeing her. He reassures her that he is just watching, and that her painting looks just like her, not understanding that the painting is just what he has always seen and wanted to see from Ivy, not her true reflection. What Matt believes he is seeing through is Ivy's rebuffing of him. He's basically acting like a stereotypical friend zone guy, and continuing to pursue Ivy despite her clear lack of interest in him. And that's the central point of the song. Ivy wishes someone could see her for who she is, outside of the airs and graces of being the popular girl. Matt thinks he could be this for Ivy. And as a result, they sing past each other. In the entire song, they only sing three lines together. The entire rest of the song is Matt trying to awkwardly insert himself into, and to sing over, what is effectively Ivy's I Am song. Let's briefly analyse those duet lines though. Ivy is imploring someone to break her free from her role, and to prove that she is more than her facade. Meanwhile Matt is singing the same line, truly believing he has done that for Ivy, and that he can see who she is. Of course, he is just seeing his own desires reflected back at him. This difference is underscored by their respective next lines, Would you recognise the girl lying there? And, I know that there is love lying there. Ivy's rendition of this line takes on two contrasting meanings. On the one hand, she's daring herself to climb down from a pedestal, and to be more true and honest to herself. And on the other, she recognises that some people around her, most notably Nadia, would revel in seeing her lose her status, and take that as a win on their own part. They are trying to coax her down from her stage, and want to watch the fallout. Matt's rendition of this line, however, is a very different, much simpler metaphor. He's very simply daring Ivy to fall in love with him. He has little interest in deconstructing Ivy's facade, or even acknowledging that it truly exists. Matt is truly attempting to compliment Ivy, and idolising her. Meanwhile, Ivy is much more cynical. This line showed up earlier in the song too, and its delivery was almost sneering, quoting those who look at her and don't really see her. This entire exchange is something that really couldn't be easily done through a book scene, and that's the entire point of a song in musical theatre. In fact, Bear is a song through opera precisely because the heightened emotional language of a song is the best medium for the heightened stakes and angst of every line in the musical. Lex Joyce made this point in his 2018 video essay on Bear and Pop Opera, and if you want to hear more about the you sing when you can't speak principle that underpins musicals, I'd highly recommend Sarah Zed's video on TV musical episodes. But speaking of not being able to do this through a book scene... Portrait of a girl Heart stopping beauty as I said, I really don't want to turn this into the musical is bad and I hate change. But I do think that Portrait of a Girl is a perfect encapsulation of the changes in the musical that water down the characterizations and motivations. But before we start, I want to put it out there that I prefer singing the Bear the Musical version. It's much more fun of a song to sing as someone with a male voice. And I actually like the key change and the compositional changes that come with it. With all of that said, why do I want to discuss it? 
If you haven't listened to the version from the musical, or just don't remember it that well, I'm going to quickly summarise it here. Instead of being Ivy's I Am song, with Matt interjecting his I Want into it, the musical flips that around somewhat. Instead, the musical version has Matt and Ivy already in a relationship. This song is instead Matt exalting Ivy's perfection and lamenting his own inadequacy, and questioning why she is with little old him. Ivy then takes on the counterpoint role, but she too is questioning why she is with Matt. Her lines come across almost mean to me. She talks about how nice he is, but how she finds him boring. It's clearly here to make Matt seem much more sympathetic to the audience, and to some extent that does work. The problem for me is that the entire central metaphor of the portrait being painted is almost entirely absent from this version of the song. Matt sings the line Portrait of a Girl to set up the song, but this isn't actually explored anywhere with him. Neither Matt nor Ivy discuss Ivy putting up some kind of facade or front. It's a paper-thin metaphor for Ivy being beautiful, but only comes into play in the first line. Similarly, Ivy gets the line Portrait of a Girl, and this is really where the metaphor truly falls apart. She sings about him being so good on paper, and that's as far as the metaphor extends. But the portrait metaphor from the opera categorically does not apply to Matt in either version. Matt is the most straightforward character in his motivations. He doesn't present a facade at all, and he presents his crush extremely obviously. There is no portrait here. And there is one line that I find truly insulting being included in the musical version. They have the audacity to keep the stripped bare beneath all the layers line. But no one in this song is constructing or deconstructing anything. There's nothing too stripped bare, and there are no layers. It's purely there because the original used that line as its big counterpoint moment. This version also fails the you sing when you can't speak anymore test. Yes, technically the exact words of this song wouldn't be able to work in a book scene, but this song immediately follows a book scene that covers basically the same ground in a much more concise way. The song doesn't add enough nuance to that conversation between Matt and Ivy to justify its own existence. As a result, it just feels like filler, and like Hartmere and Schenkel didn't want to waste a perfectly good song from the original. There is so much more I could have said on Portrait of a Girl. I haven't discussed it really from a musical composition standpoint, I haven't discussed the blocking and the staging in various versions, and I haven't really explored much of the song itself outside of the concept of the metaphor. A musical enthusiast mentioned about the symbolism of Matt and Ivy singing past each other in this song, and I'm not going to rehash that here. There is so much you could analyse on this. In fact, it'd be much more within my wheelhouse to analyse this song compositionally. But I chose to analyse the metaphor because I think that is possibly the most interesting part of this song. Truly, I could have done this analysis on any song in Bear a Pop Opera. There are so many songs that are interesting from a musical or technical standpoint, or lyrically or metaphorically, and there are songs that are particularly strong on the religious symbolism. There's one song at the end of the musical that I think we don't focus on enough in the truly subversive way it tackles one character's religiosity. But I chose Portrait of a Girl because I think this song, in its original form, is a truly well-constructed song lyrically, that strongly shows motivations and desires of a character archetype that is often underdeveloped in teen dramas, and especially ones of the vintage that Bear comes from. If I make another video, I absolutely think I might explore Matt a little further though. The fact that Matt doesn't get a solo is particularly important to how his character is constructed, and I think it could bear more and deeper exploration.